Shut up and sit down. Howdy and salutations, welcome to Broken Table Commentary, a three-man creative debate podcast all about the greatest of fake sports, professional wrestling. Every week, we each bring a different topic to the table. The topics can be ridiculous or serious, opinion or factual, creative or not, whatever we feel like. On commentary, we have our Mark, the debonair diabetic dad, Linton. Ooh, yeah, macho man. Our critic, me, Jessel, and our poor, poor, sicky Scottish boy, Michael, is uh, once again a sicky Scottish boy. His asthma is really acting up. He passing out and puking everywhere, and yeah, he he ain't making it. Uh, oh, but, I didn't know. I didn't know he was puking. Oh. Uh, you can follow us on SoundCloud, YouTube, and Facebook as Broken Table Commentary, or directly at brokentablecommentary.com. dot com. And as requested, episodes are now downloadable on SoundCloud. New episodes are broadcast every Thursday, seven p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is episode number 17, Picnic Table, Woo! our first ever audience participation episode. We've been wanting to, some of you listeners have been wanting us to, but I wanted to wait until my banked up topics were low and I needed some help. <laughs> uh, but more seriously, we plan to do these picnic tables where everyone brings topic to, topics to the table, not just the three of us, every once in a while. Plus, if we don't get to the topics today, we'll have them saved up for later use and can give you listeners props saying, hey, thanks for the topic. So uh, thank you for listening and helping making this podcast such a fun experience. I mean, uh, beyond my garbage computer, uh, which killed the last, last week's episode, but we've gone through eight programs trying to fix it and a bunch of redundancies, so... Hopefully, we'll get that fixed. And we got a whole bunch of uh, topics from the uh, listeners, so way we, to go, everybody. We do indeed. But before we get to those, we had we had some... It's been an interesting week in, in wrestling. Uh, um, uh, do you have any news that you'd like to bring up, Lenton? Or do you, would you like to talk about Great Balls of Fire? We should definitely talk about Great Balls of Fire. Well? Uh... I, I I really really enjoyed Great Balls of Fire for starters. I did too. A lot of people I'm I'm seeing didn't like it, but I don't I don't get it. I thought it was a really good show. It seems like every single pay per view we have this conversation where you and I either think it was fine or we really liked it, and most people didn't like the pay per view. Oh well, that's good. It's, it's just people just don't like to like wrestling pay per views. All I need when it comes to a pay per view is I need a at least one big surprise win, uh, a great match, two great matches, p- preferably, but one great match is good enough, and I need it to be better than a Raw and SmackDown. And this pay-per-view met all that criteria for me. I don't need a title change, and I don't need a heel turn or a face turn on every pay-per-view. I don't need a big return, anything like that. So this pay-per-view met all the things that I need when I'm going to sit down and watch, usually around, what is it? With the pre-show, four hours of wrestling. Yeah, it, it hit all those. I don't think I have a criteria for what makes me like a pay-per-view. I guess I just want it to be important. Like, episodes of Raw and SmackDown generally aren't important. So, pay-per-views should have importance to them. Stories continuing, uh, stories ending, new stories starting, that kind of thing. But I think this one delivered. Um, uh... I, I don't think I have anything negative to say about it, about the pay-per-view itself. I have I have the regular negative complaint that they just I just don't understand the writing of the WWE and why they just why every character in all of wrestling history has always been heel or babyface with some tweeners, and they refuse to have Roman Reigns be any of them. He literally tried to murder a man, and then he still comes out and and delivers a, a babyface promo and is joking it up. I don't, I don't understand. I don't get it. But to be fair, the the segment I'm talking about on Raw, uh, he did totally look like an afterthought because Brock Lesnar and Joe were the main characters of that promo. So, you know, 
It's just weird to me. I just don't get it. They could make so much more money with him if they could if they could just tweak him towards one direction or the other, but I think it's probably a case of a lot of people in a lot of different uh or were in a lot of people in Vince's ears pulling him a lot of directions and him just not making a decision is what it looks like to yeah. me. But so, hey, uh, the, as Michael told me on a message, the biggest thing about that pay-per-view was it did a thing the WWE hasn't been able to do since, probably since, jeez, oh, the Shield breakup, and that is legitimately make main event stars. The Shield breakup made a main event star out of Seth Rollins. You know what, Kevin Owens, Kevin Owens was made a pretty, was made a main event star with his feud with John Cena, so I'll give it that far too. But since then, we really haven't, everybody's just kind of been in the upper car, but no one's felt like a star. And Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman both legitimately feel like huge deals out of Great Balls of Fire. And that's rad, that's super cool. Yeah, especially since one of those two lost clean and still feels like a huge star. Yeah. I the, mean, that's fantastic. Yeah, the two guys that feel like huge stars, one lost clean and feels like a star, and the other one got punked and destroyed after winning a match and still feels like a huge star. Both of them technically ended that show on a negative note and came out looking better for it. And that's professional wrestling at its best. Uh, I don't know if I agree about Braun. Having him not be carried away on a stretcher and standing and walking on his own two feet. I think he actually looks way, way stronger at the end of that. I think Roman actually looked weaker that he had to do that and crash him into the back of the semi and Braun standing and walking, covered in blood by the end of it. But I understand uh, your point uh, as well. In- inclu- including Raw with him being so injured that he can't even show up. I like the oh, yeah. Im- I like the image and when he returns again, it it will be great. But you make a good point. I loved the image of him walking away. So, I mean, I can't, I don't disagree with that. Either way, big stars, very excited. Uh, plus, the Hardys are breaking. They're getting busted yeah. open and actually breaking. This uh, Raw was the first time Matt Hardy legitimately gave a broken Matt Hardy promo, which was really great. It was a wonderful promo. Yeah, Jeff helped out. He dropped some of his uh, little lines. He did really well. Oh, yeah. Um, but beyond that, we got some other news to talk about. Uh, first one I wanted to bring up was that AJ Styles won the U.S. Heavyweight Championship at a house show. Not only a house show, but a Raw house show. So the SmackDown title changed hands at a Raw house show. It's very interesting stuff. Um, people are trying to figure out why Kevin Owens dropped the title, what, what they're doing, why they're planning to do it. I know it came out of left field for us, because you can never guess a house show title change. Yeah. And uh I don't know. I I don't like it. I don't I'm not a big fan. I'm not I'm not a fan of house show title changes. I don't get it. I don't get the I guess the idea is that oh anything can happen at a house show, but having something happen once every 3 or 4 years doesn't really mean anything can happen at a house show. Yeah, especially uh, if it only happens at Madison Square Garden house shows. Whereas, they, which is where those things tend to happen. They've that, done that the tag titles. Canada? Yeah, they've done the tag titles a few times outside of major cities, but nothing like I would say nothing like this, where this is a match that was planned at an upcoming pay per view, and then they did it. Yeah, and so, then the title swapped so that it was done again. I think it's to clean up the. I I, I honestly I get it. I feel like. Uh, I feel like WWE feels like the rule of the rematch clause has to happen. So then they get stuck in these writing predicaments where the storylines they want to be over with just have to keep going for their logic. And I appreciate that for the most part they do try to keep that logic, that rematch clause logic going. But it cuts their cuts their story times. I think they really are trying to rush to AJ Styles Shinsuke for the US title at SummerSlam, which means they have to get AJ Kevin Owens over with. So a title change and then the rematch at Battleground, that'll finish it. That'll do it. Yeah. I just think all that could have been done on TV. I mean, <laughs> you, uh, all the things you're saying are true, but it could have been done on a SmackDown. Oh, so. totally. No, I, I agree with you. Uh, Madison Square Garden is special to Vince McMahon, so he does special things there. You know? 
I get it. I, I actually, uh, I honestly wish, uh, I, I think I might be in the minority here, but I actually wish the titles changed hands a little more often anyway. Like, TV shows don't really feel all that special any longer because you don't have the chance for, you. I, or at least I don't feel like you have a chance for uh, the mid-card title or the tag titles or the uh, main event titles to actually switch hands at TV shows any longer. Yeah, it was last year when the women's title seemed to switch. Uh, I think it switched like three times across Raw for a while there. But since, yeah, the end of last year when uh, Charlotte and Sasha and everybody was switching the belt around, we really haven't seen much of it going on. So Yeah, and that was... A, I definitely that was agree. An, even th- in that case, that was Charlotte... Charlotte wins at pay-per-views, but w- Sasha's the woman of the people and wins on TV. So it doesn't—it still doesn't even feel the same to me. But uh, I don't know. Another important thing has happened. Austin Aries has been released, asked for his release, but he's out of the company. Austin Aries is gone. There's been a lot of different reasons speculated why, but regardless, Aries is out of the WWE. WWE. How do you feel about it? Because I know how Michael feels about it, and I know how I feel about it, but I don't know your thoughts. Um, It's hard because I am not someone who likes to jump on dirt sheet reports on things like this, like just to barely touch on the Alberto Del Rio page stuff going on. Don't like touching on that kind of thing. I mean, the fact that we were all completely wrong because we all jumped on the dirt sheets, Roman Reigns, Brock Lesnar, SummerSlam match, and now everyone's hearing that it's going to be something completely different. The dirt sheets, I think, are wrong more often than they're right. So I know what they're saying are all the reasons, and they, but I'm not exactly, you know, it's hard. It's hard to base an opinion around a source that is typically not correct. Um, I'm sad that he's gone. Um, I, if it is because he is angry about, um, him being stuck in the cruiserweight division and the whole thing about, uh, the pre-shows not being put on DVDs and I am a hundred percent on Austin Aries side, if it's because he has a bad attitude and, uh, doesn't know how to handle himself professionally, then I'm totally on WWE side. But I mean, it, I can't really have an opinion on make a big decision because both of those reports float around. So, well, I know for Michael and me, we can both say good riddance because he wasn't adding anything to me. Uh, part of that was part of that was the writing of two Oh five live certainly, but ultimately i um, good riddance. Let him go. Let him have his final career run in, uh, in the Indies where he wants to be. That's fine. If that's where he wants to be. Last but not least, a very interesting uh, signing has happened uh, for the WWE. A indie wrestler, Leo Rush, who has connections to Patrick Clark, um, who is now uh, the Velveteen Dream, uh, has been signed by the WWE and is supposedly reporting to the uh, Performance Center this week. This is a pretty damn big deal because Leo Rush is going to be a huge star. He is... He is super athletic, got an amazing look. He is very good in the ring. It's only getting better. It, the thing that WWE does better than anyone else is create character for these people. And that's what he needs, and that's what he's going to get. Plus, his connection with Patrick Clark is really exciting and really interesting. It's a big, big signing. Almost almost more importantly, because it means he's not out elsewhere. He will not be competition What's the connection to Patrick Clark? They just worked together before, or what? Oh yeah, they trained together. I'm pretty sure they okay. were tag champs together. You said kept saying connection, so I was like, are they like related? Did they date? I'm not sure what you mean by that. Here, let me double check. I don't know anything about this guy, so this is the first I'm hearing of it. Oh, you'll love him. Uh, take a take a gander at some point. Um, uh, you will love him. Yeah, yeah, he was uh, tag team champions with Patrick Clark in Maryland Championship Wrestling. Okie doke. Cool. Uh, Trained with him and all that. So that's very, very big stuff. Uh, uh, Last year, he was rated uh, in the uh, Pro Wrestling Illustrated 500. He was rated in the top half at number 180 without ever having been anywhere before. Like, that's a big deal. 
He also won the Ring of Honor Top Prospect Tournament last year. He is a uh, he he is going to be a huge deal. Oh, he's a handsome boy too. I told you, I told you you'd like him. Dang, he's attractive. All right. Well, normally uh, we will have uh, one topic or so, but honestly, uh, we've now been recording for about 16 minutes, and even if I edit out about 30 seconds, that gives Lenny and I a lot of time to answer as many of these uh, topics that all of you brought to the table. So what I did is we have them all written down. Um, uh, I think Lenny has uh, some of Michael's answers, if not all of them. Yeah, I've got all of them. Uh, and what we're going to do is I random the order of them, and we're oh. just, just going to go and answer as many as we possibly can. Um, uh, we all did varying amounts of research or looking into it. I know I gave a cursory look and a think over everything because I, I wanted this to be more improvised for me. Uh, but that wasn't a requirement, so who knows what you're going to get. Uh, also, this is a very unedited list of topics. So... <laughs> There are there are going to be some that don't make a lick of sense, some that are going to be goofy, all of that, and was, um, I'm excited for all of it. The only topics that I ever outright rejected were things that had no discussion potential, like who was the U.S. champion in on May seventh, nineteen ninety eight, and uh, th- things that people that's not a discussion. Things that uh, people ask that we have actually already covered in previous episodes. That is true. I did link out link out to those, but that actually only happened a few times, which is really nice. Yeah, it made me, it made right. me happy that people were wondering these things. We're like, oh, well, that's cool that you're wondering that. We've already talked about that, so uh, that, that made me cool. happy. Hey, that's why we have the YouTube actual back catalog, so you can check out every episode there, because SoundCloud only keeps the recent ones. All right, here we go. You ready? Yep, I have... Let's- I have all my me and Michael's answers across seven pages. I didn't know you were going to do it randomly, so it may take me a bit to find the questions, just so everybody <laughs> knows. So go ahead. All right. Our first topic is from Drew. Uh, if all wrestlers were robots, oh God, <laughs> which would be the hardest to figure out was a robot? The hardest to figure out. Okay. Now, see... When uh, I originally saw a question, it didn't say the hardest to figure out was a robot. It just said it would be the hardest to figure out. So I thought it meant the hardest to communicate with. So everybody's a robot, and I'm just trying to <laughs> like figure out how to communicate with them as robots. <laughs> so uh, I think the so I think my is supposed works. to be uh, uh, figure out it's a robot, which is which one. What, what's uh, your okay. answer? Oh, my answer is Shinsuke Nakamura, and I think that works for either one. I think I'd have a hard time <laughs> uh, relating to him as a robot and uh, figuring out if he is a robot. And I didn't get an answer from Michael on this one, so there's my answer. Shinsuke Nakamura would be hard as a robot. See, my answer was James Ellsworth. Because if, <laughs> if all of them were robots, then anyone that did any kind of physical anything good, I would go, oh, yeah, it's because they're a robot. But James Ellsworth, he doesn't, he's not, he doesn't special, he doesn't talk great, he doesn't look cool, he doesn't wrestle like a monster, he just gets beat up and walks away. He's just a regular dude, and he wears enormous clothes. So you're... I, I definitely, I definitely don't, I definitely would n- never expect it. I thought he'd be the only human in a whole world of robots, <laughs> and then I'd find out he was a robot. That, crazy. that answer is way better and way less racist than mine, so good answer. <laughs> uh, we're off to a great start. All right, topic number two. Uh, this is from Josh. Build the Scooby-Doo mystery team, but with wrestlers. Okay, I've got a... Uh, All right, let's go, let's go one by one. All right, I've got the Miz is Fred. Fred, okay. Uh, so you have the Miz. Does Michael have an answer for this? No, one? Michael doesn't have one for this. All right. Um, you have uh, Fred. Who would I give Fred? John Cena. John Cena's Fred. John yeah. John Cena's my Fred. That's who I originally had as well, but I have a lot of John Cena's for a lot of my answers. So, um, so then <laughs> I have Maurice as Daphne because you gotta. Sure, Fred and Daphne. I have Becky Lynch. She's got the red hair. I've got uh, Sasha Banks as Velma when she's being regular. Sasha Banks. She's a little nerd. Um, 
Hmm. It, since this doesn't, since this doesn't say that I have to go through time, like I have to be current, I'm gonna go with Molly Holly. Oh, that's she's, a good one. She's the Velma eest of the wrestlers, and Michael would be happy we mentioned Molly Holly. <laughs> I've got a. This is just to set up who I have for Scooby Doo, but I've got Braun Strowman as Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, who who do I want for Shaggy? Uh, he's got to be a big lank boy. You know, I think Shinsuke Nakamura would make an incredible Shaggy. I think that'd be hilarious. And he then, walks around like that anyway, like he's a scarecrow. Yeah, he does, from the he's Wiz. got the walk. <laughs> the Wiz. And then I've got the big dog, Roman Reigns, as Scooby Doo. That makes sense. Uh, I mean, he is the big dog, but I'm gonna go with the other big dog of wrestling, Rick Steiner. Rick Steiner, the dog face gremlin. Ruby Ruby Doo. I didn't know if you were going to go with lines. Junkyard Steiner Dog lines. or Rick Steiner. So. Oh, yeah. Junkyard Dog would have been fun, too. Well, there we go. There's <laughs> our Scooby-Doo mystery teams. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Next topic. Topic number three. This is from Melanie. Did I say the last one was from Josh? Yes. Cool. This one's from Melanie. Oh, this one's actually a real, real question, not a joke. Uh, you mentioned recently that Floyd Money Mayweather sticks harder to kayfabe than anyone. What other celebrities do you think do that the most? Stick to, uh, uh, so non-wrestler celebrities, what do you think sticks to kayfabe the most? I only have one good answer right now, but I might come up with another one. And that's Jennifer Lawrence. I don't buy silly, clumsy, regular girl Jennifer Lawrence. I think that she made a kayfabe for herself. That oh no, I slipped at the Oscars. Oh man, it's a red carpet. I slipped again. I'm so relatable. <laughs> it's kayfabe. It's all fake. It's calculated. All right. Well, I got Michael's answer. Um, this has this is a very uh, Scottish Michael answer. There are names in here that I'm gonna pronounce wrong. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Uh, Ibrahimovic, he's a Swedish footballer who's now near retirement but was one of the greatest players in Europe for much of his career. And even now, most football fans I know think he's an actual arsehole for his legendary quips. The World Cup without Zoltan or Z- Z- Zal- Zal- Zalatan, Zal- Atan, isn't worth watching because he rarely ever breaks the character in public and people think it's him. Whereas once or twice he actually has, revealing it's a character solely designed to create money and the real, gra- guy-, and the real guy is quite a mellow guy. People believe in the role, so it's a great example in my opinion. So this is actually one of the uh, the footballers that I have never heard of. Oh, I was about to ask because I certainly don't follow football currently, but I like it. It's it reminds me of um of uh, some of the, like the UFC beefs because some of the UFC guys that stuff's just real played up and fake. Oh yeah, I don't I don't know all of it. I don't follow UFC that much, but there are a lot. Yeah, of, I know that's certainly the case. There are a lot of questions, including this one that we got uh, for this uh, episode that UFC guys and UFC rules and stuff would have been very easy answers, so I try to not answer UFC anything because UFC is just a little too close to wrestling for these creative answers. Uh, So I went with Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook is a basketball player for the Oklahoma City Thunder who... uh, Basketball players, that makes sense. Yeah, there's a lot of basketball players that could fall in this. Who last year, last year when Kevin Durant... Uh, left Oklahoma City Thunder to go to the Golden State Warriors, the team that eliminated them from the playoffs that same year. Um, Russell Westbrook decided to start playing this character who is um, the most, like, he's in love with his home city. All of a sudden, all before this, I mean, he's been playing around, I mean, he's been playing a long time. And he'd never been, oh, I'm obsessed with Oklahoma City. I'm going to stay here forever, ride or die for OKC. But as soon as Kevin Durant leaves and people are so mad at Kevin Durant, Russell Westbrook, he has to step up and become the face of Oklahoma City Thunder. And so he begins playing this character of everything in my life is Oklahoma City. 
and I will do anything for Oklahoma City and I'm going to retire with Oklahoma City and I'll take all these pay cuts for Oklahoma City and I'll never be like Kevin Durant. And this huge feud has been birthed between Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook because Russell Westbrook now plays this Oklahoma City character because he's trying to become the face of the company. So uh, that is my answer. That's interesting. Uh, is is good things coming to that for him? Yeah, uh, I love him. He is one of maybe my favorite basketball player. So, and um, they got another player to their team this year that should make them a legitimately really really great team. So, it should be very exciting to see what happens with them. But he like him and Kevin Durant just absolutely hate each other, and it's fantastic. Do you think all of that is uh, kayfabe? Uh, I would say yes. I think it's absolutely a move for what Russell Westbrook because all Kevin Durant did was he made a business decision his contract was up so he went to a team that he'd make more money and he'd win titles that's cool I like that basketball guy me too I mean I don't care about basketball but I like the idea of kayfabe and other things so that's cool yeah there's a lot most of the NBA guys are trying to make celebrities out of themselves but he's he's my favorite that does it and he's doing a great job at doing it and he's he's got everybody fooled Everyone but you. Everyone but me. That's why you like him so much. Yep. All right. Our next topic comes from Lance. What does Enzo have to do to be a legit and relevant main eventer? Ooh, I like this one. All right. I'll uh, hit you with Michael's question or answer first. Enzo could be a main eventer, but not overnight. Santino is actually the best role model, role model there, and it took years of him being the com- comedic foil, heel and babyface, before Rumble 11. Of course, they blew the shot with Santino and went for some arsehole we won't mention, although I've already mentioned him. Now Enzo... Del Rio. <laughs> now Enzo doesn't strike me as good heel material. He's a mix of Road Dog and Crash Holly, the charismatic talker who gets himself into scraps above his own ability. Have him as the guy who tries on the roster. Joe laying out Rollins one night. Here comes Enzo to do the right thing, but gets killed. Take two to three years of him being the plucky guy the crowd loves. Then do the 2011 Rumble scenario of Arrogant Hill versus Plucky Underdog, but do it right and have the underdog win. And then uh, you have him go forward and end up winning the belt. Man, I don't know if that'd work in the nowadays. Yes, I, I don't want to go deep into it because Michael can't defend it but I do not yeah. agree Michael <laughs> uh, I say uh, uh, just trust him right now trust him put him in a put him in a top feud for a top title and let him uh, have a run with a top belt and just trust him and let him cut his promos and let him I mean he's not the greatest wrestler wrestler in the world right now but we've had so many successful wrestlers and so many champions who weren't the greatest wrestlers so I say that he's already there to be a legit relevant main eventer you just gotta trust him and let him. Man, I, d- I don't agree with that one either I, 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 I need, I'm somewhere in the middle something something needs to be done he can't just put the title on him. He's he lo- he just is a loser. He he just loses matches and has no good offense. So he I I it is not viable. So we got to take some time to make that viable. The thing I was hoping would happen at Great Balls of Fire would be something along the lines of what they did when Sami Zayn was feuding with Braun Strowman. Just just this, uh, he, Sami Zayn wouldn't give it up. And Braun Strowman kept beating the hell out of him, but Sami Zayn kept standing back up. That's what I was hoping would happen with Enzo. That's how you could make him be a star. But that didn't happen, so I've got to, I got to come at it from a different angle. He can already talk, so that's good. So he's relevant, but he's not a main eventer. So he's got he's got to get better, which means you put him in a storyline where that's the goal. Let's watch him do it. Let's watch him improve. Watch him train. Um. I bet you we could make him be a legit main event contender in two years. I don't think we could do it by, you know, I bet we could do it in one year. I bet we could do it by this time next year, have him being number one contender for for the title at SummerSlam. I could, I could buy that with, oh, I don't know. He goes around and trains with uh, a bunch of legends and goes, goes hunting him down and searching for him. And that this this whole thing about it, and as he's uh, he's dealing with 
other people and so on and so forth. We could make a whole story about it, but regardless, what has to happen is we need to see Enzo actually get offense. It's like, uh, it, it reminds me of Mikey Whipwreck in ECW. Mikey Whipwreck spent so much time without even offense that when he threw his first good punch, it was, the crowd went nuts for it. The, um, uh, Enzo is a little bit better off than that, but not by much. So you could really build Enzo up to be a huge main event guy, just like Mikey Whipwreck ended up being for ECW, going that route. Because people, uh, audiences respect the sport part of wrestling as well as the entertainment part. And him trying to improve in in storyline going to... I don't know, finding someone and uh, f- finding William Regal and and having him uh, in ring test him over and over again to to um, to uh, uh, get better at submission maneuvers. And he finally learns one really good one or uh, have him go and learn how to get beat the hell up by Mick Foley. Like you can have him have this legend storyline rubbing against all these legends and learning these things. And then you have obstacles in the way, a gold dust who doesn't want him to, who who's tired of him, blah, 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 all sorts of things. I bet you could do it in a year, but he's got to get built up a little bit before, before that, I think. I, I really like the idea, and it's really funny that you mentioned someone specifically, because as you're talking, I was like, oh, I got something I'm going to pitch once he's, once he gets to the end, and, uh. I really, I, I don't, I'm not crazy about the idea of him going to lots of different legends. I think as far as storytelling goes and uh, building a chemistry, it works better if you have him with one legend. And the, the idea of him going back to NXT and seeking out William Regal to start teaching him, because William Regal, I believe, has a, a moveset and a style that if Enzo applied it, it would look really good, actually, the more I think oh, about sure. it. So I, I really like the idea of Enzo going to NXT and, get, and re, uh, reuniting with uh, William Regal and Regal taking him under his wing and stuff because that 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 yeah. that'd be really good. I really yeah. like that. Yeah. For the the reason I want multiple is because I just don't want a repeat of the mentor storyline kind of thing. That happens a lot more often than you'd think. I, so to avoid that, have him go to multiple places. Watch, watch him learn multiple things. I think would be much more interesting. Have him, have him go to the ranch. Go to Stone Cold's ranch. That'd be amazing. Him, him and Stone Cold on screen together with Stone Cold stunning him and, and beating the hell out of him, and him having to find a way to whatever and interacting with them it's it's the hero's journey except a wrestler version which i've never seen it would be really cool you could even make up a fake one if you wanted you know make up some fake masked wrestler from history that then could become this other big storyline i don't care that'd be so much fun or you or use like um mil, uh, use a famous mask on a new face to reinvigorate a old character just to throw homage to that uh, it'd be awesome there's a lot of cool ways it could go i'm just worried that especially with how i know wrestling fans are that it's it's going to be about it's not going to be about enzo it's going to be about oh we're going to get to see stone cold steve austin oh we're going to see mick foley oh we're going to get to see this legendary guy i mean it's, it's a good idea but it's not going to sure, be about Enzo that. anymore. It's going to be about oh, we get to see a guy we haven't seen in a long time because everybody everybody jizzes themselves for legends. Yeah, like you trusted Enzo, you just do it now. I I think I trust Enzo enough to to have a strong enough character, a strong enough talk to uh, be able to handle himself. Oh, I he yeah. is over enough. I totally trust Enzo. I don't trust the wrestling fans. Is the problem. <laughs> Uh, all right, let's move to the next one. Uh, fifth topic. Here we go. That's nice. This is from Ian. Um, uh, living people who should be in the WWE Hall of Fame but aren't. All right, Michael throws out three. He says uh, Vader, King Kong Bundy, and Sid. And then he puts anyone who main evented a WrestleMania, basically. Those are Michael's three. Who are all three good ones? There's so many. There's so many people. Um, uh, if I had to prioritize, I would say that the the number one living person 
who um, who is most important to wrestling and isn't in the Hall of Fame yet is Lex Luger. Yeah, talked about him, talked about him before, talked about him multiple times before. But he is important to wrestling. Period. He's a main eventer. Period. He's one of the most prestigious champions. Period. Yeah, absolutely because, him. Because we talk about we have two episodes already about the Hall of Fame. I only put one name, and I put Lex Luger. So I obviously agree. Yeah. Um, uh, next up, this is from, uh, uh, Melanie. Um, M- M- Melanie. You have to start your own wrestling promotion. Money is not an object. Who do you recruit? At least five people. Hopefully not more. <laughs> that was me. Uh, more if you want to name more, though. Yeah, I only did five. Um, uh, here are, uh, Michaels. Uh, he did a living and dead, but I'm just gonna give the living since... I assumed that was what we were supposed to do. Well, uh, since money is not an object, you technically you could throw it so much money around that you could find a portal to heaven <laughs> and hell and pull them back. Uh, I guess. AJ Styles, Tanahashi, Braun Strowman, Sasha Banks, and Jody Fleish. I don't know who that is. I don't know. I never heard of him. So, Here, let me look it up. Uh, he said that he might be uh, done and too injured, so he might go with Jack Jester or Grado. Or Grotto. I think you say Grotto. That's his name. He wants somebody big from the uh, Brit scene. And I know Jack gotcha. Jester and Grotto, but I don't know who Jody Fleisch, Fleisch yeah, is. Yeah, Jody Fleisch. All right. He did, I have a picture of him doing a... Uh, a 720 DDT, so that's good. <laughs> All right, so um, I would go with I would take John Cena just because then I immediately have a product that people are going to watch because it's John Cena. Uh, I take Samoa Joe because he's Samoa Joe. I take Ricochet. Uh, Alexa Bliss would be my women's division. Uh, she would uh, make that what it is. Uh, Cody Rhodes. And then I would take Corey Graves as my general manager character. So that's six, but since Corey Graves is going to be a general manager, I allowed that. Man, what would I do? The, the, there's the hidden question in here on what would your promotion be, kind of. Because um, you could go a bunch of ways. But I think I'm going to pick all f- five people from one division. No point in spreading out right now. It's a little company with only five people in it right now. Um, let's go. Man, I don't want to just make Lucha Underground. <laughs> but I kind of just want to pick five people from Lucha Underground to be done with it. Um, I think they already. Uh, I think they already have a show like that. They do. They do. Called uh, Lucha Underground. <laughs> oh man, I should watch that. It's really good. Oh man, I've never heard of it before. Uh, <laughs> oh god. Um, okay, I, I think I think I would take Kenny Omega, Ricochet, yeah, Willie Mack. Ooh, Willie Mack. I love Willie Mack. Me too. I forgot about him. Braun Strowman. Say that again. Braun Strowman. <laughs> we gotta get that on a soundboard so we can just Braun Strowman. I love his music. Just Bruh! it's so good. Uh, and Brock Lesnar. If money's no object, then I can pay him enough to care about every match. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to see Ricochet out there throwing it around with uh, Brock and Braun and Willie, those big boys. That'd be fun. It'd be good. Willie's actually not that big, which is what is surprising about him. Like he's bigger than a cruiserweight, but he's not. Yeah, he's not. I, I think tall, he's tall. even smaller than Joe. I, I'm happy with those five. I'll stick with those five. And you have Brock Lesnar, so you've got the money draw. Uh, okay, here we go. Another question from Joshua Hendricks. Joshua. Res- wrestlers that are the most popular with kids oh no <laughs> but not around the kids i don't even know what this question means um 
Well, I, like John Cena would not be one of these wrestlers because he is both popular with kids and he's good with kids. Yeah, because he does he does a make a wish. I assumed it as like kids would see them on TV and be like, "Yeah, I want to cheer for them," but when they actually meet them, they'd probably be kind of scared. And the all and I this is the last question I answered because I wasn't going to answer this question because I was like, "What the hell? I don't even know what this means." And I, the only thing I thought of was the Big Show. I would assume that once a kid actually meets the Big Show, and you know their head comes up to his knees, they're like, "Oh God, he's a little too big." But that's the best I could come up with. <laughs> Such a weird question. I love it. Great job, Josh. But that is a crazy question. Uh, let me see. Someone that he needs to be popular with kids, but not around kids. Um, I mean, I'm sure. I'm sure for uh, for little um, uh, Hispanic children, Alberto El Patron would be quite popular, as he's like a baby face in uh, Global Force Wrestling currently. Uh, uh, and I, man, I don't want him around kids, and I don't think kids would be happy to be around him. He's a nothing so he's, now. He's a he's, suspended. He's good. Uh, I think I think Big Show would be good with kids. Yeah, that's me judging. I'm judging him by his size. Uh, I uh, Kane or the Boogeyman also stick out as good ones. Yeah, there. Boogeyman's a good. Not one. only are they big, but they're actually scary. So it's like, oh, he's got worms. Oh, that's so much fun to watch. Instead of watching someone wrestle, I just watch him put worms on people. And then see him in real life, and they just freak out and die. He just gives you heart attacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Bray Wyatt might fall in there, too, because kids in the stupid Firefly phone thing. Because it's such a fun. <laughs> then when you meet him, you're like, oh, you suck, Bray Wyatt. I assume talking to Bray Wyatt probably is the worst. How do you ever follow what he's saying? All right, little kids, <laughs> y'all got y'all in my hands like the world. I hold you dreams as I eat. I eat all your dreams to leave just the nightmares. The nightmares on your plate, scraps, children. That's my Bray Wyatt. That's pretty good, actually. Thank you, I liked it. Uh, next up, this is a topic from Drew. Uh, what older gimmick, individual wrestler, tag team, or stable, would you like to see brought back to the current era of wrestling, and who would portray this gimmick? I gotta find that one. I know Michael's got it. Here we go. Uh, Michael says, Mojo Rawley, give him Waylon Mercy's gimmick. Oh, sure, which is essentially Bray Wyatt. Minus the magic, but yeah. That makes Which, sense. That'd be really interesting. No, I have three for this one. One I've talked about before. Uh, Charlotte with Ultimate Warriors gimmick. Love it. Right, we did Ooh, talk about that. Love the idea of that. Um, I think it would be cool if we revisited the fact that the Wyatts stole some of the Undertaker's magic, but it turns out Luke Harper has it all. So Luke Harper is the new dead man, I think would be really Didn't neat. you pitch that in your BTFI? Uh, yes, I did, but yeah. I'm assuming most people either don't remember or didn't really listen to that episode, so... Well, go back and listen to it. I it's, agree. Uh, a bunch of ways it. for people to get points. Michael got two more points. I continue to get none. Uh, I continue to lose my own game. <laughs> and and then the final one, who... And there's, there's already a feud kind of going right now, so I think he could kind of steal this, and he needs something because he's kind of boring. I think Roderick Strong could be the next Nature Boy. Interesting. See, I was I, Nature Boy has been was the one I was going to say, but I would I had gave it to Bobby Roode. It made more sense to me uh, for for it to be Roode. No, it, that that definitely makes more sense. But for I what's like currently it. Currently going I like on. It. Um. Uh. What What other old gimmick? Could uh, could come back because I really like I like the legacy of a gimmick. What's I a really good like that? What's a good thing. tag team? Nobody's nobody's mentioned a tag team yet. Uh, I would have. Uh, <laughs> okay, this is very bad, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna have I'm gonna have Devon adopt the Authors of Pain. So okay. That, so that they are now Dudleys. Okay. So the authors of Pain are now come out in the camo with the glasses, and they are now the new Dudley boys. They're Dudley boy juniors. All right. I like that. <laughs> I like that more than them just wearing black all the time, so. 
<laughs> They're already attached with Paul Elring. So go ahead and now, now they turn babyface because Devon adopted them. They are Dudleys. You get to take them to Dudley Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> which is a thing I never got to see and always wanted. I always wanted to see the inside of the Dudley's house for Thanksgiving. <laughs> I already hate Thanksgiving, but man, wouldn't that be interesting? If you got to, to do sign it with the guy Dudley holding up a sign, pass the potatoes. <laughs> you know that it would just be it'd be wonderful. Pass the potatoes. Uh, you're doing so many voices today; it's great. Uh, uh, this next topic is from Sarah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Fix my baby. a gimmick that had potential but just didn't work. That's my wife. Let's see if I can find this one. Uh, I'm a looking. I'm a looking. Okay, Michael says a gimmick that. Oh, this is a really good one. Uh, a gimmick that has potential but didn't work is Muhammad Hassan's. Oh, sure. He had great potential if he would have stuck to the whole "I'm a patriotic American who has trouble after 9/11," but they immediately went to him being an evil foreigner, and then they made him into a fucking terrorist. Boo, stick to the promised shades of gray, and his career might have lasted a year. And that is a very good and very sad example. Yeah. What's really it. interesting I'm about that is, uh, is uh, there, was a, there was a thing that got filmed but has never been put out, and I lost my money when I backed it, the Wrestling Retribution Project. And mm-hmm. one of the characters was played by Devi- uh, Davari. Davari, yeah. Uh, and he was that. He was a, he was a all-American Muslim. And the, his gimmick was that he was a baby face, but he and was an American born man, but he was treated like garbage because he is he is a, a, a Muslim and he is um, second generation, you know, he or a first generation American for his family, I guess, was is the wording. It was a very interesting gimmick. So it definitely worked. There's definitely legs there. Yeah, I also put money into that project. Not as much as you, I'm sure, but. That's really sad that it never nothing. Man, I had I had interviews with the guy and conversations with him, and I was I you were was so, so excited. It was because <sighs> that was when we first became friends, and that's like what we talked about almost every day. Is our yep. excitement and then, for that? And then it died, and then it died a death uh, because of his his uh, supposedly because of his either mental problems or theft or trusting the wrong people and all the money going away. I don't know what's going on. His distribution or something. All that's left now is I think you can find uh, the battle royal. Uh, I think the battle royal that was filmed and one of the promos is online, and I think that's it. I'm gonna find him on Twitter and try and get him on our show. He won't. He's off. He's gone. <laughs> oh God! He he's gone dark. He he did. He did indeed. Um, man, a gimmick that had potential but didn't work. Um, that's hard. Uh, you know, you know, you know, you know which one I'd really like to see brought back. Glacier. I know that he was made to be just a Mortal Kombat ripoff, but I think that would be a really cool. Um. Uh, no pun intended. Gimmick to bring back around. It would have been all that I think they needed to do is cut the little bit of martial arts he did before and after the match. That's the part that felt silly and dumb. His actual wrestling was all fine. He looked really cool. The little videos were awesome. That's the only I thing mean, I the, thought was the problem. Dumb about I it. had was it the problem I had with him is it took seven months for him to debut. So. I was I didn't care anymore. Oh, it didn't take that long. I just watched that part of WCW. So like half that. I think it was like three, four months. It's still too long. <laughs> that that, that is, is still too long. That is that is that is still way too long. That's Emelina links of time. Oh, um, I um didn't write anything down for this one because. There are a couple I didn't write anything down for, but I know a lot of bad gimmicks. I think R-Truth's rapping gimmick is definitely a terrible gimmick that never works. I mean, it gets people to sing along, but that doesn't mean that the gimmick works. True, it's it's bad rapping. So So you can't be a cool rap character and rap poorly. So coming off of what we saw from uh, last Tuesday's SmackDown, I think if R-Truth would have actually done raps where he actually cuts into people and became like a really clever mean 
cut people deep with his raps character. I think the R Truth rap character could have worked instead of the goofy, silly, everybody trying to sing along with my terrible raps character. Yeah, and it ha- it have to be better than Thugonomics rapping too. Yeah, it, it, it well Thugonomics rapping wasn't really um wasn't really try to cut deep. It was a lot more South Park humor. It was very but just the, find ways to say penis and balls the, and rhyme it. So but the rap, I, I would make it more like the rap battle that we saw recently. I think if our truth, like if you had someone do that regularly against different wrestlers, that would be. I don't think I don't think it would run its course. I think that would probably be pretty entertaining for a good bit. And our truth has our truth has some fun moves. I mean, he's not terrible to watch in the ring. The Usos are doing it now, and I'm enjoying it. I definitely want to see rap battles return. Yeah. Uh, all right, our next topic is from Daniel, my brother. Create the perfect cell of wrestling. Oh, yeah, it's a good one. By combining the DNA of five wrestlers into one super wrestler. All right. So, and I have what part of their DNA, I guess. Okay. So I have John Cena's influence just to be able to manipulate and get anything you want out of wrestling and the world. Uh, Cesaro's athleticism as he is the most athletic wrestler, in my opinion. I don't think he sweats. Uh, AJ Styles' safe hands. sure there's a better way to word that. I think anyone in the world is safe when they're with AJ Styles. Braun Strowman's intensity. And Roman Reigns' moveset. And that's how I make my uh, perfect sell. What? I don't know. even know where to start. Um... <laughs> this is one of the ones that I had to answer beforehand, because th- that is tough. Um. All right. Let's see. Uh, let's see. Uh, give me. Give me. Vince McMahon. So he's a McMahon. Because that's important in wrestling. Mm-hmm. Give me Eric Bischoff. Because he's that way. He'd be cunning and smart. Uh, Paul Heyman. So he'd be an amazing talker. Um, Stephanie McMahon, so she be be attractive. Got to be attractive. Get some extra, get some extra in there, and then give me some, uh, give me some uh, Tony Schiavone, so that he would be uh, know all the wrestling moves. So there we go: Vince McMahon, Paul Heyman, Eric Bischoff, Stephanie McMahon, and Tony Schiavone. That's my perfect wrestler. <laughs> the question did say the DNA of five wrestlers. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> All of them have wrestled in one match, I think. Shivani has wrestled in a match? Oh, you're right. Shivani hasn't. Yeah, all the others I can think all of. All right, I got specific. four. Uh, Corey Graves. Uh, uh, Corey Graves. Yeah. No, he's an actual wrestler. I was trying to He's not him. an actual wrestler anymore. He's he as much as... Re- yeah, but his DNA is that of someone who's actually wrestling. Oh, that's Plus, true. He, had the, he has, uh, he's had took too many concussions, which might be in his DNA. You can do my so goal then. Go with uh, what Joey Styles? Yeah, uh, that's a good one. Joey Styles has probably wrestled at least once. I don't know. I don't care. I, I tried to answer it in a dumb way, and I'm going to just stick with that. Nah, you went, you went, you went uh, a different, a different route. I thought it was good. You messed up, but. <laughs> uh, all right. The next one's from Joe. Uh, what's a storyline that was done in the past that was done poorly? that you think could be done better with current wrestlers. What wrestlers would you see? Uh, what wrestler would you use? And why do you think the current would be better than the original? Um, I think when I think of storylines done the most poorly in the past, uh, the ending of Goldberg's winning streak always comes to mind. Having, oh, sure. Having Kevin Nash, who's already this big established heel, doesn't need the win. It's... They, they, he cheats with Scott Hall's help to do it. Nobody looks better coming out of it. And Goldberg's huge winning streak and kill his momentum like he did uh, was a terrible move in wrestling. Uh, you can already do that better right now because we already have a winning streak better than Goldberg's with Asuka's, who is our NXT Women's Champion. So I think the opportunity is already there, and I and I believe we're going to see it done better, I think. Um Hopefully she'll be moved up to the main roster soon. 
ish. I hopefully she'll still have the women's the NXT women's title on the main roster. I would be perfectly cool with that happening. Make it even more special. Um, so I don't know exactly who I would choose to end the, the streak, but I would prefer it not to be sh- any shenanigans involved. Because when you're putting something like that, something so historically impressive, I don't really like. And, and I know, and usually I'm totally on the side of, oh, it's a scripted TV show. What are you doing getting upset about stuff like that? But when we're talking about Goldberg's winning streak, it's not just scripted TV, you guys. So I would make it uh, somebody who needs, who would really benefit from it. Somebody who's a, a, a baby face um, who would get a whole lot of, who, who could always say, I'm the one who ended that streak. Now I'm the champion. So somebody, uh, somebody new-ish in NXT, I don't know who that would be because it's going to be a while. But I think that would make it be done way, way better than the horrible way that it was done in WCW. I don't have the idea completely fleshed out, but less shenanigans. Give the win to somebody who needs the win to push their legacy somewhere is what I would say. Yeah, sure. Sure, sure. Um, uh, for me, I know that a storyline that I loved seeing happen and unfold, and it did not it did not unfold well and then it ended up not mattering was McMahon in every corner. Oh yeah. WrestleMania 2000. Uh, The, how it all built up with big show technically winning the rumble, even though the rock won the night of because, and then they go to the tapes and then eventually triple H gets involved. And then, so you have triple H with Stephanie and you have, uh, the, the rock with, with, uh, Vince or and Shane supporting a big show and Linda McMahon comes out of nowhere and brings Mick Foley out of retirement to compete. Like that should have been awesome. I mean, McMahon in every corner and yeah, I get it. Lots of people were tired of the McMahons and certainly looking back at the McMahons being, uh, as the main event parts of every story. I get it, but the McMahons have been gone long enough now that I think we could do a McMahon in every corner again. And it could be really amazing. Because all you'd have to do to fix it is not let Mick Foley lose in four minutes. Not make Big Show then immediately lose and just turn it into The Rock versus Triple H again. I was about to say, like, again. Yeah, it's it, you. all you'd have to do is take either... Um, four guys who never had a chance, like the, the titles vacated. So every McMahon has a person they want to do it. Uh, I would have four people who've never held the main event. So they each have their own stake or you have the stake of the company involved. You really give some big stakes to this. Um, uh, and the wrestlers I would pick for it. I think that, uh, I think it makes sense that Stephanie would continue to pick triple H. That just makes sense. Um, uh, uh, and especially since Triple H nowadays has started to work a little bit more story oriented, a little bit more, um, regal oriented. And it's really just, he he is there to help get the guys over. He's there to tell stories and do good things. I think that if he did what Mick Foley did, he shows up and gets, loses in five minutes, uh, in this 30 minute match. That would be, that would put over the other three guys incredibly. So Stephanie McMahon and Triple H still the same. Uh, now Linda is currently uh, a a <laughs> uh, a cabinet member for Donald Trump, which would make things a little bit difficult. Yeah, but not too difficult, I don't think. I mean, we know a Trump. We know Trump is completely supportive, and they seem to have a really good relationship with WWE. So I definitely would not rule it out as possible. Uh, but just in case, just in case, we can't have. We can't have her in in the storyline. I have a contingency plan. And that is that uh, uh, Shane McMahon gets married to Vicky Guerrero. Oh, now and you're losing me. Vicky Guerrero McMahon. I would rather have Linda, but uh, uh, if if we need somebody, I, I, I think that uh, him getting married to some other female top figure would work. Uh, and would get nice, good heat. Because I, I envision Vince as the babyface in this. Because Vince has been babyface now for the past seven years or so. Um, he hasn't really been a heel since Nexus destroyed him. Um, which is good. That's that's perfectly fine. 
Uh, so that means Shane needs to play heel for it. But re- uh, regardless, uh, or Shane played, but I don't know, whatever. Um, uh, but in that corner with that person, I would actually have a female in there. And that female should probably end up being Charlotte. I think that would oh, be definitely. a really good choice. It's it's an intergender match, and she so she pulls and supports for Charlotte. Um, um, but really, uh, any of the four horse women that aren't Bailey would work. Yeah. Uh, in Shane's corner, I'd have AJ Styles. The storyline's already built. A- AJ and him had their WrestleMania match, so now this big important McMahon in every corner. He needs somebody, and he can only trust. AJ Styles. So you have AJ, Charlotte, Triple H, and uh, Vince McMahon. I want Vince McMahon to pick somebody who is is uh, um, up and coming. Someone who could be a big deal. Somebody that is exactly Vince McMahon's type. Um, so so ultimately, that smells like Braun Strowman to me. Uh, is it, we're we're uh, assuming this is WrestleMania thirty four. Yeah, this would be, okay. uh, or 35. It would be at an upcoming WrestleMania. Fix that. Um, uh, and McMahon in every corner would now be Charlotte, Braun Strowman, Triple H, and AJ Styles. That'd be pretty rad. I I love every single bit of it, except for Shane marrying Vicky Guerrero. Besides that, but I understand why you're you're going that route. Uh, with the well, worry the, about that. my other option was uh, was uh, since Dixie Carter is now on TV uh, for WWE, she did the WWE 24. It would be cool for him to marry Dixie, and then they use Kurt Angle. But I wanted that character to have a female competitor, so I couldn't go with uh, couldn't go with Dixie. Michael does not have an answer for this one. Ah, uh, that's too bad. I bet he'd I, I bet he'd have a good one. Um, uh, maybe we'll revisit that, do it again, because that was a good question. Um, next up, uh, is a topic from Josh. Uh, which wrestlers would you want to go back in time and become the founding fathers of America? Mm-hmm. I have a very easy answer already for this. I'm ready to go. Go ahead. Ready for this? Yep. NWO, black and white. <laughs> nice. Hulk Hogan, Scott Hall, Kevin Nash, uh, eventually Sting, eventually, um, well, Sting was red and black, so he wouldn't be there, but uh, Horace Hogan and Conan and uh, uh, so many people, uh, Ted DiBiase, uh, it would be it, th- them founding our country as a new world order against the British Empire, America would have a would have that uh, that uh, black and white version of the of the um, American flag, which is already made, so we can already <laughs> pretend we live in a world where the NWO went back in time oh, and gosh. freed us from from uh, the British Empire. So that's hands down. That's so easy for me. Uh, we are a new 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 world world, world order. Um, I've got uh, Dusty Rhodes, Cody Rhodes, and Goldust. Of course. The American dream, the United States of America, is what Wonderful. it would be called. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Oh, I love it. Stardust has magic powers? Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> he can get us back there. Yeah, but he doesn't want to be Stardust anymore. He wants to be Cody. Well, see, that's what happens. He uses all of his Stardust star power to get them in the past, and then he's just Cody again. <laughs> so he never has to be Stardust. Yeah, uh, best of both worlds. That's funny. <laughs> Does Michael have an answer? Because I wish he did. No, he. I don't think he saw when all these. Oh, last he didn't. Yeah, he didn't see posted. these last minute ones. Yeah. Oh man, I, I I don't know who Michael would pick. I want to know which of our two he wants more, but I'm pretty sure it would be the 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 Rhodes family. I'm pretty sure that's who he would prefer. Oh, well, we're gonna do another question. Michael would have really liked to have been here for. Uh, I'm not going to save it. I'm doing them in the random order I randomized. All right, here we go. This is from Lance. Which wrestler would be the best companion for Doctor Who? Oh, I didn't never saw that question. <laughs> uh, well, I have never seen Doctor Who. <laughs> so, I, 
I don't. I'm not even sure. I know there's like nine different doctors, and they can travel through time in a phone or something. All right. So, so for those of you who don't know how the doctor works, the doctor is an alien with two hearts that can travel through time and space in a scientific, not magical, uh, phone bo- phone booth that is, uh, or police box that is uh, bigger on the inside than the outside. And he goes around and he helps stop aliens and alternate time dimension things from screwing up time, except in certain points of time that cannot be changed, which are called hard times, to keep him uh, from going crazy or to keep him happy or just because he kidnaps people. Uh, he has human companions uh, who come and help him out uh, on their adventures. Sometimes for plot purposes, sometimes for emotional purposes, whatever the reason might be. There have been 11 of them, and there will soon be, or there have been 12 of them technically, and there will, there will soon be a 13th. Oh, well, that's kind of close with nine. Okay. Um, so somebody who has been dominant in wrestling throughout a, a long span of time, um, someone who's not. Well, I guess it doesn't matter if they're dead, right? It doesn't matter. Doctor <laughs> Who can go through all through time. Uh, I guess yeah. I guess Andre the Giant. Then I guess he would probably Andre be a pretty Giant's good companion. Fun. Or or uh, Triple H. He likes to win all throughout the decades. See, a similarly similar idea, though. I think the the skills that would help out uh, help out the Doctor the most, I think, would be someone who knows the best how to lie. How to cheat and how to steal. I would have the doctor get Los Guerreros, both of them, Chavo and Eddie. Because then we could replay out the Chavo Eddie feud story all through time as they break <laughs> apart and the doctor has to help them because that's part of the problem, but then he brings them back and they love each other and they lie, cheat, and steal the Constitution <laughs> or or put their faces on Mount Rushmore. Or other non-American centric things. See, I, beat up Daleks. I was just thinking, who can fight aliens? I don't know. I don't know how oh, this show works. Fight. Oh, he doesn't, he doesn't fight, fight aliens. Oh no, he he solves things with with ingenuity and quick wittedness. Wow, this doesn't sound good. <laughs> Lots of people love it. Well, wow. Michael especially, which is very funny that he's not here to answer this amazing Michael question. <laughs> I mean, lots of people don't like professional wrestling, so I guess I understand. That's true. Uh, next question we have, uh, and uh, uh, it is from Daniel again. Which wrestler that you hate could you love if they made one change to their gimmick? Uh, I've said mine enough that I'll just go ahead and answer. I've, I've said Roman Reigns, all he needs to do is have a slight gimmick change because it's not like he has a bad in-ring... He has an in-ring style I don't like, but it's not bad. So that's not a problem. And if he just had a gimmick change, go back to Lee Key, go back to his Gordon Gecko version, you could do something new, I don't care, just a, a gimmick change, and he would be... I, I could absolutely see myself loving him. I really want to give him a chance. And every time I see him, I can't stand this middle lukewarm nonsense that he does, and I don't like his... His, his, I'm still the shield, I still use the shield music and still wear the shield gear stuff. I just don't like that. So just give him a little gimmick change and I'd be, I, I bet you I could love him. Uh, I have two, uh, they're my two least favorite wrestlers that I want to like. Um, Bray Wyatt, I think if his magic became useful, like he actually could use his magic and win matches with them again and actually do things successfully with his magic. I, I have it written as useful magic. I would like Bray Wyatt again, uh, which is a very easy tweak because right now he has magic, but it doesn't really do anything. Uh, and Natalia, um, and I don't know if this is a, a one change to their gimmick, but if she decided she wanted to erase her family from wrestling history, I think that would make her just amazing. And that would just be an awesome storyline and character that she just goes on this quest to just like she just is so embarrassed by her family name at this point because of all kinds of reasons. I mean, there's plenty of reasons if you think about it that she just wants to erase anything that has to do with hearts. So those are my two answers. She'd fight Maria. Yes. Because Maria and and Mike love each other very much, so there would be lots of hearts. 
is, is where I was going with that. I gotcha. Yeah, I know. I was explaining for the audience, not for you. I knew you understood. Michael doesn't uh, have an answer. <laughs> Sorry, Michael. Uh, 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 next question is from Josh again. These have always been wonderful. Uh, which other wrestler do you wish had all the fame and influence of John Cena? Alexa Bliss. I would love for her to just be everywhere on TV and for her to be respected by everyone backstage and for her to be trusted to make the decisions that keep the women's division rolling. And I think she's headed that way. You know, I think in a couple of years she could be at that popularity. So I would love for Alexa Bliss to be the women's John Cena. Not Nikki Bella. Nikki Bella. Bleh, bleh. So. I'm trying to think backwards to uh to uh the era when I wasn't watching and John Cena was was rising to the top and if there was somebody that I could just transfer all of John Cena's influence onto what well, which years were you did you stop I stopped in 2004 came back in 2010 Niche. <laughs> okay that's all I mean, Lashley, they were pushing pretty heavily for a bit. No, no, I wouldn't do it to Lashley. Um, yeah, I'm just throwing names out. Yeah. Um, it, I know I know who I'd want it to be. I, you know what? I'll, ju- I'll, just stick with, I'll just stick with who I want. I want Zack Ryder. I want Zack Ryder to be the one that got all the fame and influence that John Cena did. I, 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 or all that he has now, or at 2010 when Zack Ryder was trying to get himself over, if at that point when Cena was at his most insufferable, if all of that insufferability went away and all of the good fame and influence that Cena had got put on Zack Ryder because he was, he was actually trying to do his best to get over, to work hard, to have great matches... I, th- I I think the, I think that'd be amazing. I, I, Zack Ryder has one really big problem for me, and my mark my mark cloud finally cleaned up just a little bit so I could see it because I'd never noticed it before until last night when I was watching SmackDown. He's not a good actor. Like he comes across like he's acting. He comes across as very um um. Uh, disingenuous. Yeah. And that's the thing John Cena does best, honestly. John Cena always comes across as genuine. And that's because he's gotten really good at acting. So if that's all Zack Ryder's got to do, man. That's all he's got to do. And he could do it. He could be there. So if I if I got to live in a dream world that made it happen, Zack Ryder would be my pick. That's what I always found why Daniel Bryan never hit that next level for me. Is he just... Any serious... Thing he was involved in, he always looked like he was about to start giggling. And yeah, he's a little joke boy. He's a little jokester, little giggle monster. Um, uh, uh, I think we got time for probably two more, but may- maybe more. Um, uh, we're gonna see. I'm keeping an eye on time. Um, and uh, and uh, yeah. So the next one is from Cindy. Uh. Who do you think? has the best persona slash character in pro wrestling, and who is the best athlete? Uh, I already answered best, best athlete earlier. I said Cesaro. That's true. You did say that. And I think the best persona, most flushed out, fleshed, fleshed out um, that influences enough things, I would probably say John Cena for best persona. I mean, you know I don't agree with that. Uh, just because I don't think his character's that good. Uh, but Wrestling Isn't Wrestling showed us just how good of a character Triple H is. So I have to say Triple H's character. His character is so consistent and so good throughout his whole career. It's so interesting to watch all the ups and downs and the whole story and treat it as one big story. So uh, I don't even care about Triple H very much, but his character is is uniquely interesting and uniquely continues to be interesting. So I, I really like Triple H for character. and That's who I'd give best. Best athlete. Best current athlete, I guess. There wasn't a current there, but I'm going to go with current. Um, 
I mean, it's really hard to not say that either Ricochet or Kenny Omega are the best athletes currently wrestling. Kenny Omega's stamina and his his crispness is incredible. Uh, and Ricochet is so flawless in the ring. So it'd have to be one of those two guys for me. I had Ricochet as my second, so I would definitely yeah. push for Ricochet out of those two. But I, that's mainly because I have not seen nearly as much of Kenny Omega as you have. Omega is... It, it, it is shocking... Like, like one of the things that CM Punk always prided him on was having huge long matches. I think I talked about this before, where Chris Hero talked about how proud he was of that, and then he learned, oh yeah, long matches don't mean good matches. But CM Punk prided himself in long matches, but he was always sloppy. Like, he would botch one or two things, like small botches, but they would happen in every long match he had. But Kenny Omega consistently has long wars, long matches, and he never misses a beat. He is always crisp and and on point. It's in, it's incredible. Kenny Omega is incredible. There is a um, uh, there's an amazing Kenny Omega um, uh, Prince Devitt, who is now Finn Balor, match Balor. from New Japan that you should. Uh, I'll see if I can find it. Um, uh, online, but uh, look it up. It was a tournament match, it, uh, or, or for the title, I forget which. But it was, it's so so incredibly good. Um, absolutely, one hundred percent. And not to discredit Cesaro, not like like Cena. I disagree. Cesaro's like, no, I get it. I think Cesaro maybe in the WWE might be the most athletic. Absolutely, that one's. He is, golly, he, talk about a guy who has, never runs out of energy. He just would not stop talking, stop being in character, stop working during that 30-man Iron Man match. Iron Man match. It was so good. He's so great. He's good stuff. This will be our last one, uh, um, which uh, <laughs> it's a doozy to end it on. Um, this is from Daniel. Uh, which wrestlers would you like if you could? Oh, the uh, legendary question. Is that um, a legendary question? I barely oh, understand yeah. it as is. This is this has been on the markings of the ancient pyramids. Oh, goodness. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, well, all of them for starters, because if you like watching wrestling, then it would make it easier. Uh, but... Um, I don't like Bray Wyatt, and I don't like Natalia. I would like them if I could. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the two that I like the least. They're the ones that I will actively look at my phone if they are in a singles match. Is so that, is that just the question? Just, just is that it? Is there not? Is there not any other way we can take this one? I mean, I don't know. I'm trying I, to think because the answer is which wrestler you wanna... would you like if you could? Which wrestlers would you like if you could? I mean, I, I wish there was like a like, um, like you can only pick two wrestlers that you don't like that you could automatically start liking, because then that would make it easier to answer. So that's why I just picked two. But really, the answer I would assume, unless you don't want to be happy when you watch wrestling, is all of them. I mean, it's a total Daniel question. It's perfect. Man, um, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find some justification here. I'm gonna go with with middle ground wrestlers. Wrestlers that I have no strong feelings about. I don't... So... That that definitely limits it. So it's not just the ones I don't like. Which I, I, we talk about those plenty. So, um... Um... Which wrestlers would I like if I could? They're just... They're there, I just don't like them. Um... Um... You, you know, actually, I've, we've been watching a lot of Lucha Underground here. Uh, uh, at, at our house recently. Um, and somebody that... I just, I just don't care about at all. But if I could like them, I would. It's Phoenix. Oh, I like Phoenix. I get it. I totally understand. I just don't care. He's he's good in the ring. He's a perfectly fine luchador babyface. He does everything good and fine. He tells great stories. I just don't care. He does. Uh, he, I have no attachment to him. I just don't. I got nothing. So if I could just flick a switch... I think I think I would just go. Oh yeah, no Phoenix. Bing. Now I like Phoenix. Hooray! That'd be that'd have to be it for me. 
Uh, if we're going for that as an answer, which is a good way of doing it, um, less now as uh, I don't follow TNA so much, but I'm a very, very big Eddie Edwards fan. I have always loved Eddie Edwards. Uh, but Davy Richards, I've never really liked. And when they were together as the American Wolves or American Werewolves, I can't. I think it's just American Wolves. Just wolves and yeah. and uh, when they were in TNA, I, I I was a big fan of the tag team because I really really enjoyed Eddie Edwards and everything he did. But I was really just didn't care about Davy Richards. So it would have been uh, better if I liked Davy Richards. So, yeah, David Richards would definitely be one of those people. Even now, when I do watch TNA and whatnot, I wish that I could like David Richards. Because he's fine, but I don't know. Well, there we are. Those are our uh, those are our picks. Thank you, everybody, for pulling up a seat at the picnic table. Uh, there were a few ants, i.e. silly topics, but everyone had a good time. Ah, ha, ha. Cheesy face, cheesy voice. I don't know why I'm doing this. And somebody got an ant stuck in his throat and couldn't be here today. He got one of those picnic ants. Oh, even worse, they're all in his lungs. Oh, lung ants. Gross. Uh, but we have a lot of these great ones saved for the future. Uh, so listen in to, to episodes for the next coming uh, weeks and months, and we will probably be pulling some of these out uh, to answer them uh, there as well. Some of them were topics I had written down that we hadn't done yet, and that's cool to see uh, you guys thinking along the lines I was. And some of them are just really nice out of left field a- questions uh, that I'm really interested in answering. But uh, with all that said, I guess we're going to get out of here. Bye, everybody. Bye bye. Okay. I did not throw a rat in the toilet. That's a fun, right? And the toilet? Shh.